This visual help segment applies to the following tools, bearing and distance above and below the line, bearing and distance on the same line, bearing only, distance only, and bearing and distance inquiry. All these tools operate exactly the same. The only difference is the format of the text that they place on the line or arc. If you select a line, the bearing and distance is measured along the line. If you select an arc, the bearing and distance is the cord bearing and distance. If you select a survey point, Splash waits for you to enter a second survey point, and the bearing and distance is inversed between the two survey points. These tools operate with the standard MicroStation text settings. So if we select MicroStation's text settings, we, have, we select a uh, font and a text type. Now we have a height of 8 and a width of 10. For easy Leroy style text selection, please refer to Help, Key Ins, Leroy Text Size. Now let's dock this toolbox. And let's window up so we can see a little bit better and put a bearing and a distance on this line. So we'll use a uh, bearing and distance above and below line and indicate the line. Now we notice that we have a northeast bearing. The bearing is pointing towards our mouse. If we move our mouse in the other direction, it switches to southwest because it's pointing towards the mouse. So we can control the direction of the bearing. And if we move the mouse down, the bearing and distance flip. A little further, it looks like this. A little up, it looks like that. So we'll place the text like this and enter a point to accept. Now let's look at the dialog. The dialog says design file coordinates used. What this means is that Splash looked at the line and then looked up in the database and found that there was a survey point over here on one end of the line, but there was no survey point on the other end of the line. So Splash used the MicroStation design file coordinates to compute the bearing and distance. Now let's put a bearing and distance, same line, the meaning the text is all on the same line, on this line. Now notice we're not touching any survey points. There is a survey point here and there is a survey point here. So we'll indicate the line and we can control our direction of the bearing and it can be in these four locations. So we'll put it about like that. Now let's look at the dialog again and this time it says survey point coordinates used. Splash looked at the line and then within a very small tolerance went out into the database and found that on each end of the line there was a, a splash survey point. So it looked the survey points up out of the database and inversed the bearing and distance between, by inverse we mean computed, the bearing and distance between those two survey points and that's where it derived its bearing and distance. Now let's put a bearing and distance on this long line. So we'll put bearing and distance same line and we put it on this line down below the line. We see it's 600 feet. We indicated the line and the line is 600 feet long. But now let's put a bearing and distance from here to here. So if we indicate the survey point, then Splash waits for us to enter another survey point. Uh, we're going to indicate this point. If we knew the point number, you'll notice that Splash has a prompt survey point number equals. We could just key the point number in. But we'll just indicate the point. And we see a bearing and a distance on this line, just between here and here. And instead of 600 feet, we see that it's 250 feet. Now let's delete that bearing and distance and put distances only along these three segments. So we'll go distance only from here to here, get 250 feet. Now from here, now before I indicate, there's two survey points here, very close together. So Splash sees that two survey points were within snap distance of our mouse. So it uh, highlighted the iron pipe not because it was a lower point number than the traverse point, but because our mouse was closer to it. Uh, if, and the iron pipe's what I want, so if, if that's what I want, I can either hit accept or hit apply. So I'll hit apply. And um, there's our 200 feet. And then let's, this time I was closer to the traverse point. So I'll select the iron pipe and hit apply and go to the other end and get the 150 feet.
Now let's select bearing and distance, same line. And all these tools that have bearings have a switch on the, they have an option button on the uh, tool settings dialog for bearing. Now if we look at this option button, we have our choice of bearing, south azimuth, or north azimuth. A bearing is a measurement 0 to 90 with northeast, southwest, etc. A south azimuth is a clockwise measurement 360 degrees with 0 pointing south. And a north azimuth is a clockwise measurement of 360 degrees with 0 pointing north. So let's use a south azimuth. And we'll indicate this line. Now if we point in this direction, we're 308 degrees from south, more or less. And if we point this way, it switches to 128 degrees from south. So let's enter our point this way. And we have a south azimuth. Now we'll put it back to bearing. And let's look at this arc. So if we use bearing and distance, same line, and enter an arc, we see that we get a chord bearing and distance around the arc. So uh, if I'm pointing this direction, I'm getting a northeast chord. If I point this way, I get a southwest chord. So we'll give it a northeast chord. And this command is, is usually used in conjunction with perhaps the arc and radius. Maybe we'll put the arc and radius above that. And you may even want to put a tangent and delta on the, on the curve somewhere. The bearing and distance inquiry tool is used to measure a bearing and distance or curve information uh, without actually placing text on the microstation design file. So what we'll do is we'll select the tool and uh, let's indicate this line. And we see that that is a north-west bearing and the distance is so-and-so. And this, this text is in the tool settings dialog. Now, uh, if we look at the settings button, to press the settings button, we get the splash dimension settings dialog. Uh, these settings apply to all the bearing and distance and curve tools. Uh, we'll only look at the settings that apply to the tools documented in this help, visual help segment. So the bearing south azimuth and north azimuth buttons operate and are the same as the option button over here. So if I select south azimuth, we see that turn to a south azimuth. We'll go back to bearings. We can control the accuracy of the, of the distances and the bearings or azimuths. Uh, the distances can be from zero to four decimal places accuracy and the seconds can be whole seconds or tenths of a second. Uh, the annotation offset in millimeters of paper is currently set at two millimeters of paper. This is plotted paper after you plot the microstation design file. Uh, the distance is, let's window up a little bit, the distance is measured from the line to the text. And the distance is translated from the two millimeters of plot paper into the real world offset distance by splash automatically based upon the intended plot scale. For more information, splash knows your intended plot scale. So for more information on an intended plot scale, please refer to settings, scale. You can select that, hit cancel, and help current command for information about the scale. Now, this splash dimension settings can also be started from the splash with ripple through dialog settings dimensions.